Okay, guys, this is part four of who the hell did I just marry? Now, before you watch this, make sure you watch part three. This is about a woman named Risa and how she ended up marrying a pathological liar. Her video's hitting four mil now, y'all. So y'all know what to do. Get your tea and get your snacks. Cause you already know this is about to be good. <laughs> if you wanna watch it yourself, you can go here. The rest of us, you're with me, come on. Now where we stopped, Risa finds out that Legion has been having R-rated messages with other women. Now, Risa's reading the messages. One of their girls was messaging him and was like, when are you gonna come get this kitty? Now, by the way, if that went over anybody's head, she ain't talking about just any kitty. Risa scrolls up the past messages and Legion was telling the girl that he went to hit it after lockdown. And throughout the phone, he was doing this with all types of girls. Risa was like, hey, yo, the person I just married is an imposter. Legion is saying some freaky stuff on here. And he been treating me like some kind of Virgin Mary. So boom, Legion gets out the shower. Risa like, what the hell is this? Legion was like, uh, I, I was just joking, baby. I was just joking. I shouldn't have said that. I was just flirting. Risa's like, is this what you into? He's like, no, I was joking. I was joking. I, I was stupid. She's like, I'm over here behaving and you're sending your ding -a to people. You know how many men I turned down to be faithful to you? This destroyed Risa. At one point, Risa was like, I'm getting my lick back. And Legion's like, it's not that serious. Look, I'll delete Messenger right now. Risa's like, that's not good enough. We're getting marriage counseling. And Legion's like, okay, okay. Risa's like, he may have not physically cheated, but he's definitely emotionally cheating. And she tells Legion, you're not sleeping in the bedroom with me. And when my mama get here, don't be on no mess. We're going to act cordial. We're going to act normal. We're going to act good. By the time her mom got there, Risa couldn't stand that man. But she had to let that man come back in the bedroom. So Legion's sleeping. She's just awake thinking about this. She's like, yo, if this is what you're into, that's something that we should have talked about. Is there something wrong with me? Am I lacking something? Because those messages went way back. She found it in March. Those messages were going back to December. Risa did not want to be around Legion no more. So she goes on a long drive to clear her mind. She calls her aunt. This man just did this. He's sending, he said, and picks the women. The aunt was like, what do you want me to do? We all watched you marry the man after everything he already did. So what you need to do is go home and figure it out. I don't really got any advice. So Risa drives back home. So boom, a few days later, they start their marriage counseling. They're doing it over a Zoom call. And Legion was cool. So the pastor's like, so you guys have been married for three months and got y'all first infidelity and there's no intimacy? Legion, what's up with that? Bruh, I was joking. It was stupid, okay? Like, if you don't want to forgive me, don't forgive me. But like, I already, I already apologized. The pastor and the pastor wife was like, whoa, this man's some work. A few days later, Legion was like, Risa, I want to talk. I want us to make a joint bank account. Risa was like, what? This man has been paying the rent and the utilities and now he wants a joint bank account? Risa's like, okay, fine. Let's look at each other's bank account. Legion's like, okay, cool. They look at the accounts. Legion has 9,600. Risa has 1,500. He logs into the Chase account. There's 15,000. Risa's like, okay, now show me the other two. The ones with the most money. Legion's like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Risa's like, what? Why? Because there's a lot of money in there and my uncle told me never show your woman how much money you got. Risa's like, but we're married. He's like, nah, it's not happening. So guys, they get back to counseling. The pastor and the wife is like, okay guys, welcome back to our next session. Legion has private bank accounts with lots of money and he don't want to show me. And I know it's there because he said he could buy a house for $700,000 in cash. The pastor's like, uh, okay. Legion, why don't you want to show your wife your savings account? Legion makes up some BS. The pastor's like, something is not right here. Then Legion goes off. Legion was like, who do, who do y'all think y'all talking to? I'm the one that earned this money. Blood, sweat, and tears. I don't got to show nobody shit. No woman can tell me to open my bank account. My wife tried the same thing, and that didn't work. King Kong, don't, don't have shit. <laughs> the pastor and the wife like, yeah, I, I don't think y'all going to make it. Reese is like, wait, no, don't say that. We're going to make it. Legion's like, man, I'm off this. I'm not finna get attacked just because I don't want to show you my bank account. Reese is like, and this is why we're here. 
the pastor and the wife was like, yeah, like, <laughs> we're going to still help. We're going to surprise. We're going to provide support. But y'all got some Jerry Springer shit going on here. If this was premarital, we'd have told y'all, hell no. Nah. It's raps. It's finito. Don't even try. Do not collect $200. Do not go past go. So now, guys, it's the end of April. This man still hasn't shown the accounts. One day, legions like Risa, I want to talk. I know your lease is ending soon, so let's start looking for houses. Now, just like all of us, Risa's like, ah, I don't want to hear it. I don't want no part. So Legion does it on his own. He finds a realtor named Amber, gives her a budget, and they start. Amber shows them three houses. Risa loved the first one. Legion offers all cash. Amber's like, okay, cool. We just need your pre-approval and your proof of funds. Risa's like, Jesus, here we go, here we go. Legion's like, cool, I'll give you whatever. But I'm not giving proof of funds until they accept the offer. Amber's like, yeah, I understand. But this is how we're going to do it. So I'm going to need that paperwork, okay? Obviously, Legion doesn't send the paperwork. So one day, Risa goes to the gas station. And she gets a call from Amber. And she says, I just don't understand why Legion wouldn't want to send in the paperwork. If you already, if you have the money, why don't you just send the paperwork? Even this, you're his wife. You can even send it. Risa wanted to send the chase statement, but it was a year old, so it was void. Amber's like, he could email it, take a picture. Oh my God. In this phone call, you could tell that Amber knew something was weird. And Risa wasn't quite picking up what was happening in her situation. Risa's like, okay, look, I don't know what's going on. So let's just put a pause on this. I know this sounds weird, but I, I just don't know what's up. Amber's like, okay, do your research, girl. If I can help, call me. We'll get you a crib with or without him. Risa felt like this was like a woman to woman thing. Like a something's not right, open your eyes, like a signal. This was the last time that Risa and Legion looked for a house or talked to a realtor. Thank fucking God, because I know all of us are tired of it. She went home and told Legion, hey, let's just find us a place to rent and save our money. And Legion was like, okay, cool. Now, we're still somewhere in the end of April. And guys, <laughs> this, this everything's about to get good after this. <laughs> now, Risa starts looking for another job because she didn't want to be dependent on Legion to pay off this car note for that Nissan. Legion hears this and just starts cracking up. He's like, you're not leaving. You like that job more than you love me. And that only fueled Risa. She started applying everywhere. In no time soon, a business called her up. They said, just fill out this background packet and send it back. Now, one thing this form asked for was the full spouse's name, birth date, and social security number. Which, by the way, I don't know why a job would ask for your spouse's social security number. I don't, what's the point if you're the one working there? I don't know. She goes to Legion and says, hey, baby, I need your social security for this. He's like, I'm not giving you my social security. She's like, oh, my God, I need this because we're married and I can't lie. Help! Help me! Help me! Legion's like, oh my god, here. Risa turns it in. And also, Risa again pays attention to the social security number. And she's like, this one is different from the one on the marriage certificate. The first three digits was different. So either she messed up and ran the wrong number, or the social that was put on the marriage license is wrong. So guys, she takes that number and does another background check. She not playing. All of the addresses attached to that social pull up. It had Georgia, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania. But one thing it didn't have was California, which is weird. Is this an incomplete background check? Because he puts it on his resumes, his social media, and quite a few things. Now, on a side note, Risa tells a story about how Legion hits his leg at work and it's slowly been getting worse and worse and worse. Risa would try to take him to the doctor, He'd be like, no, no, I'm good. I already got an appointment coming. Doctor says, just put some ice on it. Risa says she mentioned this for something later. Now, guys, we're in May. COVID lockdown ends and stores start opening. You guys know what else opened? San Diego State. So Risa calls up their office. Somebody picks up. She gets information on how to request transcripts online. She puts in the social on the name and there was no results. She sends an email and asks, has this student ever gone there? They reply and say no student with that social has ever been there. So Risa has a talk with Legion. She's like, so what's the deal with San Diego State? He's like, what are you talking about? 
why is there no records of you? <laughs> Legion says, I was a private citizen. My father paid the school so that my name and my social wasn't publicized. Then the school gave me a special card so that anywhere I go, I don't got to show my information. This is why San Diego doesn't have any records of me. But you said that you played football. I did play football. So you're saying that your school didn't publicize your name anywhere and they're in violation of NCAA rules, which is like some like National College Association. And I looked it up. Each agent has to fill out a background check. There is no way he got around this. I was also wondering, do they let you wear a uniform with no name? And when you score a touchdown, don't they like say, hey, number this and their last name? Like, don't they call you out? Like, I, I feel like they would need to have that. Legion's like, why are you asking all these questions? She was like, eh, no, I'm just, eh, I'm just curious. <laughs> but for real, how are you in compliance with NCAA and you're a private citizen? <laughs> Look at Reese's face when she asked this question. <laughs> this stink face is crazy. <laughs> he said, all I can tell you is I'm a private citizen. Now, at this point, Risa now knows there are no records of Legion being in San Diego State. So now days roll by. Legion's knee, it gets worse and worse. Like he would just come home, shower, get in the bed, and then elevate his leg. At one point, he started using Risa's pain pills, the one she got from surgery. But the reason why it was hurting kept switching up. First, he said he hit it at work. Then he injured it in football. Eventually, it got to the point where it was hard to work on when he went to his job. Now, guys, it's mid-May. Legion calls Risa at work. She's like, what's going on? Legion is like, I just got a call from my stepson. He was crying on the phone and everything. Reese is like, what happened? Supposedly, the son said that his stepdaughter died from COVID. And they found her in the apartment unresponsive. And as soon as she got to the hospital, she was pronounced dead. So the son called him to say that. And he was like, Hey, can you call mom and send her $2,000? Which at this point, guys, <laughs> I don't believe phone calls no more. I'm done. I'm done. But Risa, she was like, no, I don't play with deaf. I'm just going to believe you. So she said, I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. Send the money. We, whatever we can do to help. Supposedly, Legion was so hurt because like you guys know, like he's real close to those kids. Now, guys, it's May 20th and Risa's still on a mission. She does another background check with a different company. This one listed addresses. And it also listed names that associate with that social. And one of those names was his ex-wife. Risa tried to find her on social media. Nothing came up. But this didn't make Risa doubt it was her. Because one thing that's true, men lie and women lie. But the U.S. federal government with your social, don't. It showed him living with his ex-wife, but it wasn't in San Diego. The crib was in Georgia. It also showed a divorce record in Metro Atlanta County, which means they got married in Atlanta, not San Diego. Reese is at work looking at this information. As soon as she found out, she tells her boss, hey, I got to go real quick. I got a, 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 fam a family emergency. She gets in her car and pulls up to the courthouse to request the public divorce documents. And she starts reading these documents. And she reads this. Number one. Legion didn't file it, his ex-wife did, for irreconcilable differences. And she did not request for money or support. Number two, the marriage did not make it more than six months. Number three, he was served the divorce in Metro Atlanta, which means most likely he was living in Atlanta. Number four, he filed a pauper affidavit. I hope I said it right. Which means he's telling the government that he's so poor he cannot afford the fees for this divorce. Number five, they served him at his previous employer, which on there said a grocery store. What is happening, guys? I'll tell you what I mean in this story. Like, oh my God, you can't, you can't make this shit up. Number six, the ex-wife's name, address, and phone number was listed. Risa was like, as any rational person would do, she wrote down that phone number, went back to work, told her friend the whole situation. And her friend was like, girl, you better call her and find out from her. Cause who else would know better? Now, Risa doesn't know if the ex-wife changed her number or not, but she dials it and calls anyway. Someone picks up. Hello? Risa's like, hey, can I speak with Barbara? 
Now, we're calling her Barbara because Risa does not want to use her real name. I'm going to imitate their phone call. This is Barbara. Hey, Barbara, this is Shirley. Shirley who? Shirley Jones. I'm the wife of someone you know as Legion. Barbara starts cracking up. She's like, oh, wow. If you're calling me, then I know it's bad. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to bother you or disrupt your life. I'm literally coming to you on some like woman to woman stuff. Because you're like the only person that can help. Okay, what do you want to know? So like, I understand that like you and my husband, you guys like communicate often. What? Girl, no, we don't. One thing that you need to know about Legion, whatever he says, it's a lie. Now guys, Risa knows Legion as that Tinder name and like kind of the same name that was on his uh, Facebook. She mentions that name to Barbara. Barbara's like, I don't know that name. That's not his name. Nobody calls him that. This man must have unlocked a new personality. Risa was like, what was your experience with him? Barbara's like, let me guess. He told you I cheated on him and I'm trying to get his money. Lisa and Barbara talk about all types of different things. How they met. How Legion's never been to San Diego. They've never been there, lived there, nothing. Barbara's like, how did you get my number? Risa's like, things was getting so weird. I needed answers. So like I did a background check, saw your guys divorce, went to the court and got the documents and your number was on there. Wow. Th things must have been bad. <laughs> Girl, what did he promise you? They talk for 30 more minutes. They do a lot of talking, guys. Barbara tells Risa, hey, I don't want nothing to do with this. So keep me out of it. Risa gives the ex-wife her word. Barbara's like, girl, don't blame yourself. You were dealing with a like master manipulator. Barbara also tells Risa that Legion's ex-girlfriend called her too. And the ex-girlfriend lives in Douglasville. Now listen, guys, Legion's driver license had an address in Douglasville. He told Risa that it was his sister Shantae's address. Risa tells that to the ex-wife. The ex-wife was like, no, that's his ex-girlfriend's address. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. The ex-wife says he moved in with her and created this whole narrative with her. And then she found out he was lying and kicked him out. And after she kicked him out, she called me like you're calling me. She was like, girl, when I was with him, I got out before it got bad. Once I knew I was out. Now, guys, the phone call starting to come to an end. And before they got off the phone, Risa was like, I got one more thing to ask. How is your daughter? And I'm leaving you guys on a cliffhanger right there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But this is just getting out of control. How many lies are we going to find this man in? Also, has Legion been going to his ex-girlfriend's house? This entire time? I almost stopped doing this series because it was taking me forever to make each episode, guys. I swear I'd be up all night. So if you guys want part five, y'all run it up, share it, like, run, make me believe it, bro, because I'd be like, I don't know. If I do part five, I'm gonna do it a little differently because I hear that it's basically a lot of parts of her just catching him in lies over and over again, and that might get boring. I don't know. So we're gonna see because I, I still gotta watch it. All right, guys, as I always say, what do you think about this? Guys, we are becoming a problem. 1.5 mil and Facebook kept banning us. So we made a YouTube. We kept putting in the work and now we're getting a play button, y'all. We about to get a play button. Now, as I told you guys, I'm really a music artist. I love making music, but I make all these videos because you like them. So can you please follow the page for me? Now, outside of all this, remember dead gang, it was just you and you had a plan. You have come too far to end it right here. Did you forget all that work you just put in? I know you're discouraged, but you are close. We get one life. And on Dead in Them, we ain't going out like no weak motherfucker. If they want us out the game, they're going to have to take it from us. So when this video goes off, don't forget to pop your shit, star.
I would've done anything All you had to do was ask And all of the damage is done I can't imagine ever taking you back Is it that hard to keep it a stack? Cause all of your promises looking like cap Cause when I was calling your phone I already knew where you at <laughs> I tried to give you a chance While you doing me dirty I thought you'd be the last one to hurt me Till you put a knife in my back You cannot say I didn't love you to death Baby I knew you was bad for my health But I thought I was covered by reinsurance That you would get me It kills me to know that I would give a kidney If you got sick just to find out what you really had wanted on all this time you were hitting a lick Don't try to tell me I'm misunderstanding You know I don't know, I like to be gaslit This ain't the first time you ever did fraud It's just the first time that you got caught Man